Rainbow Bell, Tidal Bell, Zero's really pissed. Legend baseball's really hard while Leo's puns persist. Hey, Rainbow Bell, Tidal Bell, join us here today. Oh, what fun that we will have with Oris Hogaray. Dashing through the sky on a lofty twin. Over Mount Chimney, watch out for that cliff. Remagins and towns with even better plot. But Brawley's gym is one dumbbell from B, not parking lot. Oh, Rainbow Bell, Tidal Bell, Zero's really pissed. Legend baseball's really hard while Leo's plus persist. Hey, Rainbow Bell, Tidal Bell, join us here today. Oh, what fun that we will have with Oris of Hooray! I hate you guys for oh. this. Oh, come on. Don't be a Grinch. It's Christmas time. Christmas time, I tell you. It's about togetherness, warm, fuzzy sweaters, and plenty of hot cocoa. With everyone right by the uh, fireplace with the, with the stockings hung up with care, while the Christmas tree flickers and bursts in the flames. You know, I'm pretty sure your stocking is the only one where, it's act where the person wearing it is actually bigger than the stocking. Oh, shut up. <laughs> anyway, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, and welcome to the Legend Hunters podcast. A.K.A. Well, the Christmas cast. It is a very special holiday season, so we have to have a very special podcast. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. We've got a lot on our plate this time, don't we? Yeah, and sorry for ruining your guys' eardrums with that horrid singing. Oh, come it, on. It, Christmas carols, man. Christmas carols that can peel flesh off a bone. Eh, not much Well, better. you seem to be doing fairly fine. Not much worse than that pike of yours. Oh, shut up. <laughs> anyway, so, how was our week? Well, why don't you start this one, Leo? Oh, boy, has it been a very busy week. Um, lots of Christmas shopping going around. Uh, I had to do shopping uh, not just for you guys, but also for our, our Dungeons & Dragons group, for my family, too, so... Definitely lots of running around going on. I did manage to go ahead and get some time to play with... Uh, I managed to pick up Smash 3DS for myself, so now I'm actually be able to practice that. And I found my own, so you can actually... We can actually practice against each other on that now. Uh, I also picked up uh, DS1 for the P for the PlayStation 3, so I'm going to be going through that again for with my own run this time. Ah, Dark Souls. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. What else? A what else? Um, little bit of Bayo, a little bit of Pokemon... Uh, just a lot of preparation and busy work so that I haven't had too much time to do stuff. Um, I did manage to go ahead and, um, what, what did I do? I, I did manage to get you your, I was, we, for the Ravenloft group, we had our secret Santa, we had a secret Santa going on. Yep. And I was a legend secret Santa, so I got him, he, he got to open his gift early. Oh, yeah. And that was a, that was a fun one. So, uh, uh I legend, asked, legend, legend. What's up? How, how did you like the taste of my sausage? Context! Con context! Context! I got him, uh, for, uh, for Legends Christmas gift. I got him one of those portable battery packs, a, cho a milk chocolate cigar, and uh, and a tray. And a and packet of hickory smoke or what was it? Honey baked so uh, brown sugar, brown sugar, unhoney turkey smoked sausage from Hickory Farms. Yes. Who even likes that shit? Well, to be honest, it was fairly tasty. Melts in your but mouth, the not damn in your head. joke. Melts in but your mouth, for the damn joke. <laughs> in, in all fairness, I got my comeuppance. No homo. In, in all fairness, I got my comeuppance too. The GM was my secret Santa, oh. and, and he got me a night knit a night knit beanie, which was cool, and, but... a, and a four pack of pussy energy drink. Gift wrapped in a Victoria's Secret uh, <laughs> gift bag. <laughs> yeah. And I could only take half the can before my brain was about to explode from the amount of taurine in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. For the second year in a row, uh, Tails. The, t Tails, the GM's uh, fiance, was my secret Santa. And she has quite the sense of humor, but uh, she, what did she get you this time? Uh, she got me a cape to cosplay as basically either my, uh, my, uh, my uh, thief character, Cheshire, or uh, my, uh, my Talon character, uh, Mikhail. The Reaper. The Reaper, yes. yes. Which so, is really cool. Yes. As well as she got me these really cool dark chocolate 
Dungeons and Dragons dice. D twenty D twenty chocolate pieces. D twenty, D six, D five, uh, D three, D D four. They were well, you got them all, and they were all gone by the time we were done with the session. Yeah. As well as a small little bottle of Bailey's Irish Cream, which if I recall right, I'm now almost done with. I'm, you... I'm not surprised, to be honest. I thought you used it all a lot the night we were there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think you're, I think you made like some sort of slutty drink with that. No, I poured Bailey's Irish Cream, Kahlua, rum chata, and cough, and... Uh, box the uh, sweet coffee on top of it yeah yeah but what was the discussion you were having with the gm something about slutty uh drink names or something like that uh yeah i was actually looking at uh some different recipes to make with bailey's irish cream and i found this one that was a really slutty name but i forget what it was called it wasn't something like angel kiss or blowjob or no it was like i think it was slut something or other <laughs> Jeez. And I then I saw another that. one that involved basically mixing Bailey's with Bloody Mary mix. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that bottle is almost gone, which is weird because last year she gave me a bottle of gold rum and I'm still not done with it. Yeah, well, well now you know now you know your alcoholic preferences. Yes. Right. And, and, uh, and actually, I was her Secret Santa as well. So you guys basically exchanged over yes. that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and so what did you get her? I got her a six-pack of apple cider, hard apple cider. All right. I got her a little shaker thing for, uh, like, powdered sugar or uh, spices or whatever. And I got her a mortar and pestle. A mortar and pestle? Yeah, for cooking. Oh, for cooking. Or yeah, cooking. one of those... Mar- I was thinking, like, alchemy. One time. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. Same, pr- same principle, Same basically. principle, yeah. I mean, I, I just thought it was, like, for a character or something, not, like, actually what she wanted. Well, if she wants to make an alchemist character, she can use that. Okay, well, there you go. Okay. Oh, man. And uh, I also got... Uh, well, the last one is the, the last GM. One, the last one was the GM, and I was the one who was uh, in charge of that. It was, unfortunately, very, very last minute, but, thankfully, I rolled... A Crit? criti- critical success on this. <laughs> I found some Spanish wine, which uh, we all partake in, uh-huh. partook in, and it was pretty. honestly pretty good. Yeah, there was a lot of good things said about it, and uh, I was I was glad to enjoy my half glass of it. For- fortunately, this time when we consumed alcohol, nor orgies were had. <laughs> oh God, that! <laughs> if, if you recall, it was the last Christmas party that we had the infamous uh, orgy with Zarin uh, Ash. And uh, Jathro. Well, so much for never mentioning that, but okay, let's run with it. Yeah, <laughs> which, that which, happened. Is, which was my character, uh, Legend's character, and Tails' character. And All t- having... By, by the way, the funny thing about this is that the seducti- seductive mage, Ash, is Legend's character, and the fat homosexual priest, Jathro, is Tails' character. Who was doing Zarin from behind. Yeah. Which, which means Zarin was in the middle of a red and Arab was in the middle of a, of a redhead and Arabic sandwich. Uh, and I, if I recall right, that was almost the game that made me want to leave. Yep, we never had anything like it again, and we were going to leave that scene in Al de Gaspa, but unfortunately, uh, it, what happens in Al de Gaspa doesn't necessarily it's not, it's, stay it's, in it's, Al de Gaspa. Not Al de Gaspa, that was Muhar, guys. Whatever. Same principle. No, it's not. Because uh, Algy Gaspa is Las Vegas, Muhar is like truth or consequences. Oh boy! Like that's the that's the difference in, in territory we're talking about. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, either way. Okay, so yeah, yeah. The last time um, we had other things, that other happened. things that I've been doing. Um, wow, we weren't actually. <laughs> that's pretty much about it. Yeah. So well, wasn't there one more thing? Uh, didn't you uh, say that you you came back from a job interview, didn't you? Yeah, just recently. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not, but I mean, that's just up in the air. Well, we'll find out probably next year. And either way, we're wishing you luck. Uh, thank you. Uh-huh. All right, Zero, what about you? What have you been doing this week? Uh, this or week. these weeks? Well, I've been doing a lot of stuff here. I was practicing with Smash for quite a bit, training my amiibo. To level 50, I would like to like to mention. Yes, and that little fucker is really annoying now. God damn your Pikachu amiibo. <laughs> if damn only... it. If... We... If only it was a right shoe. We're, we're going to be able to have a me- We're going to be able to. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have a amiibo uh, gambling soon. Oh yeah, because I for Christmas I basically got uh, 
Leo and Legend each an amiibo. I got uh, Legend of Link amiibo and uh, Leo his personal preference, Peach. It was the only way it was going to be able to justify getting that as a present. Yeah. If only one of you two guys actually gave it to me. <laughs> and I bit the bullet and bought it. <laughs> yeah, but you realize now he's going to have that thing spamming its ass drop on us the entire damn time. It probably won't. I mean, the AI built itself depending on what you two do. So the, uh. fact, the fact that it's me owning it doesn't guarantee that it will consistently use the ass drop. Why do I get the feeling that, that all three of our Amiibos will have the exact same outcome as every single Smash uh, fight we ever have, with Legend always winning and me always losing? I doubt it. I doubt it. My Amiibo will eventually conquer us all. <laughs> <laughs> it will become self-aware like Skynet. God, yeah. Oh God, Link will rule, it will rule the entire Earth and rename it Hyrule. Oh man. Like you see on... Uh, on Times Square, a uh, little Link figure just running across the screen <laughs> slashes up the cables. Yeah. Um, let's see. Other than that, uh, recently I was binge-watching an anime that I had started a few years ago, never finished it. Which one? It's called Shiki. Shiki. Hmm. Uh, uh, let me explain it. It's murder mystery, really interesting art style. Has to deal with vampires. Of course. Oh, yeah. Legend, I forgot to mention. Uh, I went to the local Best Buy the other day. And you know what I saw? What the Devil Works Part-Time. Yes! No! Fuck. Yes! And you know what? Now seeing it, I'm actually kind of interested in it. Yeah, I know, right? It's awesome. <laughs> I hate the trope in that thing. Which ah, trope would that tropes be? Are too old. Being transplanted in the modern-day Earth from a fantasy setting. Would you prefer being transferred to, to modern-day Earth from uh, the feudal era? Because that's pretty much one-third of the animes that come out of Japan. <laughs> Inuyasha, fuck you. Well, not just that. That's just, like, that's the, that's just the best well-known one. Imagine the best one... Best one? Oh, god damn it. That is a low one. bar. I mean, no, I no, no, no. No, no, no. I mean, I said the best well-known. Oh, I thought you said the best one. I was going to no, say no, that's no. a low fucking no, bar. No, I'm just saying, like... Oh, man, you're already having shots fired. No, like, over imagine, the freaking, uh, imagine freaking Nobunaga... Being transformed into a preteen, into a teenage girl, and then having her exist in the modern era. Oh no, you're not talking about that one, are you? Oh, I was just making a joke. I didn't know it was an actual real one. The ambition of Oda Nobuna, where the entire universe of Japan was gender bent. <laughs> well, that's wow, an ten, well, twelve minutes in, and we've already gotten the rage quit twice. Yes, wow, <laughs> achievement. Uh, yeah, that's. Hey, we've only just begun. Okay, Legend, uh, it's going to take him a bit. Why don't you continue on with your week? Okay, my week. Um, let's see, what have I been doing this week? Oh, God, you literally made me cry. <laughs> well, both Zero and myself have gotten Dark Souls 2, which has been proving to be rather awesome in its own right, though. Feels a little easier. No! No, it's not! To be honest, a lot of the mechanics did throw me off, Mainly, Mainly because the of, new stats. Well, not the new stats. Uh, just the sheer smoothness of the game. The fact that they ironed out all the kinks from this game. So far as I've seen. Granted, Maybe. I just got this game. I don't know if there are any other, if there are any uh, Blight Town type glitch zones in the game. But I do like what I'm seeing so far. It looks amazing. I am glad to have picked it up because I am now a From Software fan. Mm -hmm. So now we wait for Bloodborne. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait for a PS4 for that. Really? It's only going to be for PS4? PS4, Xboner X 1. Oh, yeah. fuck. Well, yeah. I now have a reason to look into getting a PS4. Yeah, and I do Because, seriously, fuck Microsoft. Ooh, more shots fired. Well, Sony isn't doing all that hot, but we'll get to that later. Ooh, yeah, that's uh, Also, the, the other thing... Are you done with your weekly? Uh, well... Let me see, what else have I been doing? I've gone ahead and I've started to finally build upon competitive teams. I know that I said that I am not going to be uh, diving too deeply into competitive games, not joining tournaments, whatnot. But you know what? I've found some reasons to keep going, and I'm a Pokemon fan through and through. So I'll keep on rocking whatever I've got and build the ultimate teams, as I used to. Yes, which he will use the... Cur the to basically kick my my ass to the curb. Oh, no, no, no. You always do. 
I'm gonna be giving you some of the good Pokemons too, you know? Yeah, you still owe me that Ferrothorn. Yes, for... It's for, gonna be your Christmas for, for, Yeah, for Christmas, uh, okay, yeah, so... Yeah, so, uh, Christmas next year. Okay, so backstory for a second. Uh, how long ago did, was this promise brokered? Uh, before my birthday. Okay, so before... Before Zero's birthday. So about four months ago. The legend agreed to go ahead and give Zero a Ferrothorn. Which I gave him one of my highest IVs, which actually had the lowest speed IV, which is what I needed. Yes, and it helped, but then several problems occurred. The first of which being uh, the Pokemon itself. In order to keep the IVs uh, set, I needed to, well, basically roll the dice several times and pray for A, the right nature, and B, the stats to be exactly where they needed. And, C, needed. and C, still keeping the moves, the egg moves. Well, right, and every time uh, you roll, you basically get well, a little bit closer well, to learning your moves. With a, with Ditto... Eat, uh, Everstone, Destiny Knot, well, that will go ahead and simplify it to an extent. You're still going to have to roll for quite. IVs, but I mean, other than that, it's still pretty good. You know, I not think we're quite. probably confusing a few of our younger viewers. You think we should eventually make like an EV IV training video? I, I'm, I'm pretty I, sure that if they've been listening to this podcast, they have an idea what everything is. Yes. I know, it's just a... Yeah, don't underestimate our viewers. I know, I know, but I want to... No, you are. Okay, I am, but I still want to offer okay. some help. Okay, uh... But, uh, yes, so he, so Legend's gonna fulfill that promise, and also made a new one today, too. Yes, I ha since Oris actually has two freaking breeding centers, I can actually work on multiple projects at once, and one of which is... Projects. Yes, projects. One of which is a, a, uh... Cosmic Power Veneery for Leo. Yes. Yes, for your freaking harem. Don't say it like that. Well, you want me to call it your waifu? No. Then I'm calling it your harem. No, you can call it something else. Your girlfriend? No. Uh, this is becoming rather offensive. <laughs> Who are you talking to? You, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I would you're talking to a guy who is... I would, I would ta you're talking to a guy who would insult his own mother. I also You do, on a regular basis. It's kind of odd. Yes. Uh, we would expect a little bit more class out of you. Clash mass. I'm blunt as a as a freaking hammer. Well, that reminds me of that a explain, lot of yard that explain, work. That explains how you get nailed a lot. Hi yo. Ooh. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I shall use my screen pillow to smother you. Go Ooh. ahead and attempt it. I'm right here. Dang it. No, no, no. no. Okay, so. Uh, what have we all done this week together, you may ask? Oh, uh, yes! A certain movie came out that we had been very, very excited to see. That we saw on Thursday. Uh, that we saw on Tuesday. Yeah. that We saw before everyone else did. The 8 o'clock midnight premiere. Which was of... Of, of... of... Battle of the Five Armies, The Hobbit. So, spoiler alert, do not listen to, the re to this next part of the podcast if you haven't seen Hobbit. Hobbit, Battle of Fire. No, you know what? We can go ahead and avoid spoilers. I'm kind of tired of doing that. Tough shit. Uh, One of you is going to do it. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll just go ahead and say the predominant thing that'll basically sum up the movie. They kill the dragon at the beginning of the movie so they have room to kill off everyone else. Yep, that's pretty much it. Which still makes me kind of annoyed to see. Uh, Smaug basically died in, like, what, the first 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah. but to be fair, he does it with stop. True, but it would have been better off if he had died at the end of the second movie. Eh, to be fair, it wasn't the dragon that they were actually setting up throughout the other movies. It was the Battle of the Five Armies. It was, yeah, they used the dragon to bring the downfall of Rivertown to cause the whole sequence of events and all the bull crap. Yeah, and so God killing the dragon to... actually made things worse. Yeah. Joy. Ugh. But it's a pretty good movie. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of fun watching it. By the there. way, I think this is the only movie I've seen all year. No, you've seen the others. Well, yeah, I mean, this year. Battle, Battle of Z. Yes. Oh, yeah, that too. And then, uh, didn't we go see uh, Gabriel Iglesias when he had the movie for her? Oh, wait, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, my mind... So this is the only big movie you're thinking of. The only blockbuster I saw. Yes. Right. Because Zero cannot detest mainstream media nowadays. Yeah, I kind of... Nothing, nothing that involves a woman who wears her own hair as a bodysuit. 
watch it. <laughs> hey, I'm a fan too, man. I know, I know. Just don't make me kill so, you. So, yeah, it had a couple of hiccups, like the dragon thing, and then also the really bad CGI for one of the dwarves that shows up. Yeah. Well, man. according to you, I need to get a closer look, because that character was freaking hilarious. We were looking at a freaking IMAX screen. How much closer do you have to be? <laughs> He needs a microscope to analyze every pixel. He wants to be able to count the 110, uh, 1080p. He wants to count the 1080p. Not to that extent, but I'd have to get a better look. I will at say the that the beard myself. didn't look CG. Yeah, the, the, all the beards were CG. Yeah, but not as bad not, as that not, one. Not, not the uh, not the main dwarves. The main well, dwarves we could... didn't look CG. There were also some stupid moments where it's where it's like I want to say Bill, uh, Bilbo humor, where it's like. These moments were not supposed to be funny, and they totally were. Yes, we ha the entire theater was laughing on the floor at one moment. We thought that the bad guy we've been waiting to see get axed was done in the most peculiar and hilariously underwhelming way possible. If it wasn't for the fact that the character fighting him was supposed to die... We, we would have accepted that as an ending. Yeah. Yes, that would have just been perfect. That would have just been hilarious. That, that Unfortunately, was... drama had to happen, and we can't have people in the sequels that so, were not there. So we had to go ahead and retcon that shit. Yeah. yeah. But I'm glad they still included it in the movie. Yeah. Yes, because it's just gold. An another quirk of the movie that kind of irritated me was some of the choreography. Like, what do you mean? Like, the Legolas fight. Okay, the Legolas fight was bullshit. So there's a Legolas has a fight in well, has yeah, a fight yeah. scene. He has a fight scene in Any the video. time in the series, look at the whole movies as a whole. All of the movies, wherever Legolas appears, it's bullshit. Well not just that, but it's, it's like, all Legolas no, no, bullshit. No, no, no. When when you see Legolas do a head scissors on a guy and is one of the main points of the movie, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Basically, Legolas knocked over a tower in between a water, frozen waterfall, damn, and created and created a bridge. There, he fought an orc, an orc general, as the tower was collapsing and breaking apart. As he was climbing up fallen debris, which is technically he, a, he ran up falling debris which, in elf time, <laughs> which basically is against the laws of physics. And, and then, Screw physics! I'm an elf. And, and then did a hurricane rana off of the orc. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Indeed. But it was a lot of fun to watch. I highly recommend watching it just it, for, it, it, for the last. It's laps. still awesome. Yeah, it's still awesome. Although, Don't expect it to be like the Lord of the Rings series pro uh, proper. It is The Hobbit. It's not the... Uh, it's, it's not, the, it's it's not, not, it's not it's, the epic trilogy that we were all expecting, it's, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's not the original... It's not the... It's not the trilogy... The first trilogy Peter Jackson worked on. Yeah, and... Yes. But mean, it's still good. Why do, yes. I get the still that, why do I get the feeling we're eventually going to get a remastering of the Lord of the Rings like George Lucas did with Star Wars? Oh, you can bet money on that. Yeah, but you And know, you probably could the way your luck's been. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, but you know where you can't get money on, guys? What? what? The interview. The interview. Yeah. Oh yes, it's time for assholes of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Starting with North Korea. Oh yeah. Please hope. I pray to God we don't get attacked for this. No, they they basically. So here's the thing. Um, earlier in the week, uh, there was there was a leak uh, from Sony where someone went into their databases and stole a bunch of private emails, uh, personal info about employees, etc., and were leaking them online. Uh, they also really leaked certain uh, internet trailers for, for some of their upcoming projects, but commercial, uh, commercially, no, no consumer was hurt. Okay. Just a lot of embarrassing emails about how the internal uh, Sony crew do not like working with Adam Sandler and revealing some private, touchy information about some of their other projects. It's weird, because I thought I also heard like some social security stuff was yeah, leaked Yeah, well. again, personal information of, of employees. Yeah, so that's still pretty devastating. That's yeah, but, but I mean, it's not going to... But I mean, as consumers, we don't care. Yes. The main thing is that their threat, they were threatening 9-11-style attacks against movie theaters that portrayed the interview. Yeah, that basically uh, showed the interview. That, that were showing the interview. So in response pulled uh, the interview from its 25th Christmas release date and is tentatively even postponing the entire project. I'm calling... Well, well they withdrew, they canceled their entire North American release. Well, no, they canceled it, period. Like, yeah. It's not coming out the 25th at all. Also, I was also hearing that movie theaters were, were uh, 
were well, well, stopping from doing it before Sony was about to pull it. Well, pe- well, they were doing it to protect their interests because they didn't want another Aurora. Yeah. But eventually, Sony did agree to do it as a whole. Here's where things get interesting. Uh, certain smaller ones, I know there's an Alamo Draft House in, in Texas that did this, but certain uh, movie theaters were going to go ahead and offer in as compensation to people who already pre-ordered uh, the interview tickets a free, a free uh, showing of Team America. World Police. World Police. And then... Which features uh, Kim Jong-il's, uh, Kim Jong-un's father, getting, uh, Kim Jong-il getting killed in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> and then which unfortunately got pulled by Paramount Studios for the same reasons because they didn't want want terror attacks happening. Fuck Jim. So basically- even more, President Obama has actually released an official statement regarding this, to which he says, "I don't agree with what Sony needed to do, but let me make this clear: the, uh, North Korea started this. We will respond." Ooh. So, so in short, North Korea is trying to ruin Christmas. Actually, <laughs> to be on an even more cynical note, North Korea is trying to trigger World War Three. Yes, North Korea over a movie. Over a movie, yes. Over a satirical, facetious movie. Again, uh, for those of you, I don't know why I was hoping somewhere in this in this last remaining speck of hope for humanity I have in my heart, and that's a small speck. Well, hang on. I was hoping that maybe uh, North Korea would actually be rational. And uh, hang, on, hang, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. North, North Korea, Korea rational? Like I said, small flicker of oh. No, 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 no. North Korea, the border between North Korea and South Korea is known as our version of Mordor. <laughs> you do not simply walk into North Korea. Despite what they a, will shoot so, you on sidebar legend. Like that's that. despite what a man in in southwestern Texas says. Ugh. But uh, anyway, short, short short version of this: North Korea is fucked. Yeah. Let's move on with the other thing. Uh, Zara, you had a you had an asshole of the week too. Well, my asshole of the week. It happened late earlier in the in the um. Uh, in the month, uh, I, we forgot to cover it in our last... No, it didn't. It happened before we recorded. That's what happened. Uh, it did? Oh, yeah, yeah, it did. So we didn't get a chance to talk about it. But, but, it, but it happened, so Zero, take it away. Okay, so for starters, I'm a furry. I have no, no secret about it. I'm proud of it. I'm happy about it. And if you don't like it, fuck you. So it even pisses, pisses me off more when a freaking terroristic attack on a furry convention happened in Chicago. To put it short... Chlorine gas was filling the entire hotel. Yeah, that's... Ooh. And... Uh, well, <sighs> I am not a furry, but I do not condone any violent acts. I will happily condemn any person who wants to see any group of people dead. And the thing is, I knew... I have friends who went up there. I have online friends who went up there. Well... And they made it out okay? No one got hurt? There's 19 were injured. 19, 19 injured, injured, but everyone is expected to make a recovery. Okay, yes. that's good, but I hope they catch the... Did they catch the guy who did it? I don't know. Uh, they're investigating it still, but odds are with something like this, we're going we're gonna to get to the bottom of this very quickly. And here's the thing that really pisses me off. People were condoning it. Mm-hmm. People were condoning them getting hurt. So my asshole of the week is not only the person who caused the attack... But the assholes who condone this well, shit. You know, you know what? Who the, condone this barbaric behavior against fellow people. Z- Zero, you know, you know what the bright side to this is, is it, don't you? What? Well, the fact of the matter is they were explicitly targeting furries for the, for the attention of this attack, yes? Yeah. That means it can technically... That means furries could technically qualify under uh, statutes that, would, that essentially allow them to qualify as a, as a minority... Which means whoever did this would would then be charged as a hate crime. Oh no, duh! I know that. Which, which doubles to even triples the intensity of their of the crime. Which nineteen counts of I'm just going to say assault out of the top of my head. Uh-huh. Not to mention a terrorist attack on 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 on, 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 on hot soil. Yeah. Plus the numerous possible accounts of if something went wrong with that attack. And not to mention the fact that, and not to mention yeah, that the chlorine gas would also cause untold amounts of property damage as well. Property damage, you got you got pain and suffering, which is the all which is the heavenly grail of civil lawsuits. 
Yeah, they're fucked. Yeah, whoever gets caught, they're f- they're gonna have bent, uh, bent over taking a giant radish to the to the derriere. <laughs> uh, no, Thank it's, you. it's gonna be uh, daikon. <laughs> Daikon. No, have you, have you seen those free, the, the freaking? It's the freaking Super Mario Two turnips. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, but have you seen yeah, the Daikon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, the Daikons will go deep, but these stretch. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Ow! Your peach amiibo strikes again. Uh, yeah, boy. Okay, so enough, enough of enough of the sexual stuff. What's in the news? Let's see. What is this? Minecraft story mode announced. What madness are you speaking of, Mojang? It's actually not Mojang. It's Microsoft, isn't it? No, even not even them. It, it's actually Telltale Games, the the brain brainiacs behind uh, a Wolf Among Us and the uh, wa- and Walking the Dead series. Walking Walking Dead video games. Okay, Walking Dead video games. I can't speak for, but I can speak for uh, the Wolf Among Us. Cool. I don't know what to say about it though. So this is supposed to be a uh, this is supposed to be in I guess it's in the line of what Telltale does in that they basically take a world and they make a story in it using whatever the mechanics there are. An example of this is they released recently a tale of the border uh, the ta- tales of the borderlands. Tales of the border, which is a what? which is an adventure game based in the in the uh, borderlands, borderlands universe. So they specialize in doing these adventure games within other people's universes. They are the ultimate fan fiction writers. Oh god, dear god almighty. You know, they're not fan fiction writers, they're fan fiction gamers. So fan fiction so, game so, developers. So, so the idea is that they're making a they're making the story-based game in the Minecraft universe and it's going to it's going to incorporate elements of that. Huh. That well, at least they'll have an easy time rendering the characters cuz they're basically polygons. Oh, they, they can go into the polygons. You hope that 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 they do that. I don't if, know. If you never if you've never seen a Telltale game, the production values are actually very high. Yeah. yeah. So, even in like So it, I'm expect I'm expecting a few mod packs put in the game. Oh, not no, I don't think <laughs> mod packs, but you are going to see very high def characters and you will experience the feels. Mm. Oh, yeah. They are good with their stories. They are very good with their stories. Although story. the problem is, I don't think any of those Telltale games are Mac compatible, so I'm going to be thoroughly fucked. Well, they are available for the X, for the X Bone, the Xbox 360, the PS3, and the PS4. Yes. Keep in mind, I have no online uh, usage for the Xbox 360, and I. I'm pretty sure they're going to still go ahead and release it digi- uh, uh, via disc. Uh, yeah, I mean they. Yeah, I think they already have at least for one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wolf the, the, the Wolf Among Us and I think uh, the Walking Dead games too. Yeah, yeah, but I can't really speak for the Walking Dead again. I I've, I've, I've seen the Walking Dead and it's actually really good. Hmm. I'd have to see. Yes. Okay. So what else is on our plate? Uh, the Steam Holiday Sale starts. Ah, right next to the cookies and milk. Yes. So it started yesterday. Uh, same deal as 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 last year, gentlemen. Every 12 hours, you get a new plethora of games, aside from a lot of games already being discounted, some of them going up to as much as, uh, I've seen, the most I've seen is 92% off. Holy jeez! And that was on Just Cause 2. Just Cause. Yeah. <laughs> so, but again, you can see random things. The more you buy, the more uh, gift, the, the more trading cards you get, the more trading cards you get, the more shit you can get. So, buy, 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 buy. I never understood that trading card mechanic. Okay, okay. so the deal is that you get trading cards by buying X dollar amount of games. Mm-hmm. Get trading cards. You, you Once you get enough trading cards... So you it's get, basically a credit system. It's a credit system using, okay, using so trading that's, cards. That's easy. You get, you, you, get, you get the full set of cards. You get, I think, credit back or you get a new game back. Or, you, or I think it's even a game off your wish list. Yeah. So, well, my wish list is now almost empty because thanks to a good friend, Akari, I now only have one, two more games on my wish list. <laughs> so, in other words, thanks, Akari. Yeah. yeah. I also got something from Akari. He got me uh, the AVGN Adventures, and boys, there are a lot of games that I want. Aces Wild, Bro Force, Mercenary Kings, Knights of the Old Republic, a lot of old and new games that I'm looking into. Hmm. Unfortunately, my... I had a gaming PC, I could actually enjoy some of this shit. Exactly. My, my PC's still crap. So I'm sticking with what I've got. Okay, so we have uh, on to some more. So on into some RPG news. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is going to be on the PS4. 
Joy! Held in its original shitty PS1 quality. Oh, God. Yeah, here's the thing. They, during the whole... Uh, what kind of presentation was it called? PSX. It was PSX. PSX. PlayStation Experience. Yes. At the PlayStation Experience, they had, like, two giant screens pop down. They had the Final Fantasy VII logo show up. <laughs> they had this guy rise up and start... Not, not just this guy, the creator of... The, one of the big heads up behind Final Fantasy VII. So, we're ta are we talking something as big and hilariously overdone as it is the Reggie versus Miyamoto? No, no it was no. the ultimate troll. It, it was the... It was the... Okay, so, Reggie versus Mia, versus uh, Shigeru was the no, biggest no boner, it was Iwata or Iwata was the biggest boner popping moment that Nintendo's ever given us <laughs> yeah. okay this as in is good or bad as in good boner as in we're all about to explode this made everyone hard and then instantaneously flaccid <laughs> and then immediately get a hate boner ooh so yeah this they're importing the Final Fantasy 7 it's the Steam version the Steam remastered version directly oh, back directly with the shitty graphics and everything, the shitty at camera angle, the shitty everything into, PS, into PS4, which so, was, so they were just everyone at the PSX convention was like, oh, are they actually going to remake it? Are they actually going to do the high tech graphics and everything? <gasps> no. And then they said we're moving it from the Steam one to the PS4, and everyone was like, oh fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate, Zero. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, I can. I don't even like Final Fantasy VII, and I can share their pain. Well, I but think then again, although I have, I do have one possible reason why they aren't doing it. Because they're holding out. No, they're too scared. They're going to fuck it up like they did with thirteen. Ooh. Well, they're too scared. They're going to alienate everyone. I think that they are holding out because of one thing, and that is that they have fifteen on the horizon. They're the re... I actually, back when I was younger, when I saw the uh, remade trailer for Final Fantasy VII, I was thinking, oh, wow, they're going to remake it? I'll get a PS3. Never came out. They're doing that shit again with a PS4. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Well, fingers crossed the 15 will actually be good. <laughs> well, actually, the, uh, I... Uh, I saw the English trailer for it. English trailer for it, yes, came out. Yeah. And how does it look? I haven't actually seen this. Actually, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Voice acting's not that bad. Main not that bad. Main character still sounds like Sasuke. Hey, better than freaking Lightning. I kind of like Lightning. Better only... than freaking Titus. <laughs> the only time I like Lightning... <laughs> okay, guys, guys, guys. I actually have a reason why that laugh was awful. It's not because of bad voice acting. It's because they were he was voice acting. He was, he was supposed to be doing it bad, yes. It was intentionally done that way. Yes, he was literally I, forcing I, I, a laugh. I, I know he that is. That does not he stop the blood from running I from know. my ears. <laughs> it does not. By the way... And it does not forgive bad the, characters. The thing that I'm... Act, that it's I'm, actually not that bad when you think about the it. The thing that I'm happy mm, about I is that they so. at least... That, that, it's, that it's kind of a cool idea. It's basically the Bachelor... It's basically... The never-ending bachelor party. I don't know if it's going to be like that. I think there is going to be... There are going to be... Uh, there's political elements, I think, that are going on. Yes, I game. know this. We know there's political elements. It's Final it's Fantasy, a, damn it. It's and it's a prince involved, of course. It's, it's either be political, or it's religious, but, but, or it's end of the world. But regardless, the idea of the never-ending bachelor party amuses me. So we must buy it. Okay, what's this? what platform is this coming out for again? What do you PS4. think? PS4 and X-Bone. Dang it! I need to get this thing! Yes, you and do. And I have no monies for it! Yes, you do. This All is right. fat! Moving on, also coming to to PS4, this Gaia 5 brings the revengeance. Ah! Revengeance? Yeah, there's a new... Also for the PS4. Yeah, there's a new mechanic called revenge mode, where basically it's supposed to up the part... It's basically supposed to up your character's... Uh, power levels if someone dies with, with some with some unknown with some unknown drawback however i'm assuming it has to do with something with the 100 on 100 battles you're supposed to have in this game 100 on 100 good boy that's what oh, that's going to be amazing to see in the original that's going to take forever to finish in the in the previous oh, things could go in the quick. previous games um you you had quite a bit of enemies you could have to do i think uh you have 10 player characters 
uh, I think up to 30 enemies on a given screen at a time. So it can be about uh, 40 characters. This one's supposed to be about a uh, 100 characters on the screen. So it would be like 50 versus 50? That's still freaking epic. Yes, and it's and again, this guy is known for their puzzle RPGs, so taking it to a, to grander scales means it's going to get butt fucky. Why, why am I picturing a 50 foot tall, uh, like, I know in the original this guy you could sack people yes. endlessly. I'm picturing a 50 person yes. 50 man yes. tall. Yes, so the mechanics are more likely going to be, yes. going to need to be adapted for such. Which, again, will be... Would there be a too. limit, maybe? Like, maybe 20 as a max? I have no idea. This guy typically likes to go insane on its on its damage numbers. I think you could probably make a 50-man tower. Yeah, a friend of mine showed me, like, some insane damage calculation for a combo. Um, It was in, like, the billions or trillions. <laughs> yeah, it, I, it, it can, and I think it goes up to... I think trillions is, is the current limit. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay. It was, like, six trillion. So... Yeah, and, the, and there's strategies to max that out. So, I mean, it's not unheard of. Next on the list, we have Hatred. Um, no, it's it's no longer on Steam. No, wait. Yes, it is. It keeps make, It can't make up its mind. Hatred? It's okay. like an indecisive emo. Uh, you're not far off there, Legend. What the heck is Hatred? Okay, so Hatred is supposed... Was this um, indie game made by a guy, and the whole premise is shoot people. Okay, you remember all of the big black rage feelings that you had in high school? Yeah. Condense that into its purest liquid form, and there you have hatred. So, basically, you're creating the incarnation, incarnation of war. Um, I wouldn't take it as poetically, what is, but yeah. Yeah, it's not as far as war, but it is... Uh, it's, it's poetically evil, yeah. I mean, it's good enough. So... It was initially pulled on Steam because one of the people uh, in charge of Greenlight was saying, "There's no point to this game. All you do is shoot people, and it's not like it's not like COD where there's a story behind it, and it's not like Doom where there's points behind it. So it's an indiscriminate killer, get killing game. Uh -huh. So it was initially being pulled for that. Oh, so Enter they were taking it for the reason why people call video games evil in the first. Enter game. Gabe Newell." Who goes ahead and apologizes to the owner and says there was a misunderstanding with our cast. Uh, Steam is supposed to be a license. supposed to be a creative engine to allow people to go ahead and express uh, their express their games. Uh, we will be putting it back onto Steam shortly. Uh, it didn't end there, did it? Uh, that's where it's ended. Yeah. That's where it's ended. Okay. So Game we might be he is both the what did I what did I call him? I call him a savior of gaming, and I've also call him. Uh, he's both good and he's both evil. Well, the thing is that, I mean, Gabe Newell is he's kind of... He's, he's not playing sides. I mean, he's understand... He's chaotic evil. No, understand no. Understand that if he picks a... If he goes ahead and censors it, then it creates, it creates a... Uh, it creates a history that he censors games, which he doesn't want to do. He wants business to come to him. So unless it's object... Unless there's something like, say, tits being shown and it's not proper, or it's something truly... Ab abhorrent, like say, um, crap. I can't think of a, of a of a controversial game now. Probably like a rape, baby simulator. killing genocide. Sure, let's go with that. If it's nothing like that, it, 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 it can't. It, it would be like a genocide. It, it, if, 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 if it if it's hot, if it's hot coffee for San Andreas, he he will allow it. But if it turns to rape, like that's probably one of the few times he would actually ban it. Yeah, and yet there's a market for it in Japan. Yeah, but Japan. Well, let's not talk about Japan. Let's not talk about Japan. Let's talk about Japan. Actually. <laughs> Actually, let's not talk about Japan, and by talking about Japan, why the hate? Okay, no cat girl for you as Tekken. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen her. She, so, she looks like half furry, half vocaloid. Yeah, actually, that's a pretty accurate description of her now that I think about it. I couldn't put my finger on it, but yeah, that's what she looks like. Yeah. So, uh, I think her name is Lucky something? Lucky, K Lucky Kate or something like Lu that? Yeah. But... It's a, it's a design character that, one of the, that, they, that was supposed to be going to Tekken. And a bunch of people on NeoGAF were already hating the design of it. To which the character designer of Tekken goes on the Twitter and says, we will go ahead and we, we understand that you Westerners like the meathead characters, so this character will not be showing up on the US version. So this is why we can't have nice things? So the internet is why we can't have nice things. Yes. That being said, anything said over tweets is not official, so... It's not entirely certain whether or not this will stand. For all I know, we'll get it as DLC. I mean, I don't know. Uh, tweets 
the social networking, it's basically becoming a... It's becoming close to it, but it's not. It's still not an official social thing networks, yet. Social networking is becoming both a savior and the downfall of humanity. You can Are we back to Gay Newell again? You could, say, you could say that about anything. You could say cheese pizza is the savior and the devil of all things. No, that's that will end up giving you a coronary. Only if you get the tri- only if you get the triple deluxe version from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Okay. Speaking of uh, indie games, all uh, the grease and herpes. <laughs> uh, dude! Dude! <laughs> oh. If there's any gift that we don't want, we do not want an STD for Christmas. <laughs> oh God! I, that's the gift that keeps on taking. Here's the thing, guys. If I laugh at your guys' pain. My life is is pure and gym, simply joyous. Well, if me, I laugh, I win. Okay, let me introduce an indie game that I heard of. I've seen a couple of let's plays of it, and this looks fun. And it's a game called Destroy the Porn. What? Destroy the Porn. It, I believe it's on Steam. And uh, plot of the story goes as follows: You are a kid, and you are dead. You go to hell. Satan is talking to you about the renovations, including a P.F. Chang's that have been going on in hell. <laughs> unfortunately That's for you... like a lot. Unfortunately for you, Joe, you have an obnoxiously large amount of porn left in your room, and you know that your mom's going to sift through your belongings, so you have to get rid of it. So you make a deal with the devil, literally, to make it through hell's labyrinth. <laughs> And defeat the boss at the end, which will grant you 60 seconds to do whatever you want on Earth. In this case, destroying the porn. The game has a lot of humor, it is comedic, and the game mechanics look awesome. For a preliminary game, I think this thing has potential. Why the fuck didn't you tell us about this earlier? Oh, because you guys were bringing up Steam and indie games, and it just occurred to me. (laughs) Fair enough. And uh, Markiplier has a let's play of it. I highly recommend watching it. It is it, this thing, this game looks like fun. It's like a combination of uh, I want to be the guy with Metroid, with elements of uh, a sh- uh, what was it? What's that called though? When you uh, a scrolling shooter like a shoot 'em up. Shoot 'em up. Yeah, with shoot 'em up elements. I and it's just awesome. It is awesome. The I highly recommend watching it. Just I'm to see contemplating what it, is. what it looks like, and I'm having a stroke. And ah, I'm seeing colors. It's a two D uh, platform. Allow me, allow me to hijack your Markiplier train and also talk about another game he's been playing. Oh, Five Nights at Treasure Island. What? Which is <laughs> that's a thing. It's a fan game based from some person on uh, Deviant Art, and the plot is exactly as it is. It's tr- it's uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, but you're at Treasure Island. And- and basically, the bad guy is a is photo negative Mickey from the abandoned abandoned uh, by Disney uh, creepy pasta. Oh my god! And basically, you're playing through that. <laughs> oh, I gotta see the this main, now. The main it, it operates just like for, like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. The only thing is, you don't have doors. You only have cameras, which you can turn on and off mm-hmm. to go ahead and prevent them from catching you. Yeah. And sometimes the cameras don't turn back on. Oh boy. Yeah. Same idea. They've done up to night. The the creator has done up to night two. They are not making this a full game. This is just an art thing that they're just doing for kicks. They did it for the love. Yes, they did it for the love of the of the fandom. Oh, and I believe the original creator of Five Nights at Freddy's says he never expected this kind of devotion for the game. Oh yeah. Let's hope oh. it doesn't turn into a into a Flappy Bird thing. Oh uh, boy. No, it's already turned into porn though. What? I believe it. I'm staying out. <laughs> oh, right. Five Nights at Freddy's Rule 34. Okay. Moving on, then. Moving on! Let's go to Amiibo news. Quick, burn the porn. Okay, Amiibo news. Um, Legless Peach uh, Amiibo goes up to $25,000. If you see one, please refrain from stealing it and buy it for regular price. Then go to eBay and uh, sell it for a profit. So recall the Samus double arm cannon uh, amiibo that sold up to like $900, I believe? Yeah. This one went up to 25k. 25 triple zero, gentlemen. 
these factory defects are getting to be rather interesting to watch. If not for the fact that people are going crazy for it, but just for the amount, for the crazy, ludicrous amounts of money that are coming out for these things. This is awesome. Well, it's not just money that's generated from random sales. The streetwise sales are also going high, and it's getting competitive. Uh, Rosalina is due to be released only for Target. Oh, they're doing an exclusive. Well, they've already done exclusives. Shulk, Lucario, and Meta Knight are only available at Toys R Us. Shulk, Meta Knight, and Lucario are only at Toys R Us. I'm going to have to go there later. Like and uh, we're and, going back to a Toys R Us. And God, Rose, that's been a decade it, since it's. And, and Rosalina is only available at Target. So get so we're going to start to see. I would imagine Palutena and uh, Duck Hunt being only available at Best Buy or something like that. Yeah, I'm not being surprised at this by this anymore. Why do I get? Dang. Circuit City doesn't exist anymore, does it? No, it went out of business quite a while back ago. Okay. Also. Bad news, if any of you want, say, a Peach Amiibo or a Donkey Kong Amiibo, buy them now. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, uh, Nintendo's made it made a statement saying that they're assessing the, the, value, the, the, the sales of their Amiibos, and some of the less popular characters will not be restocked once their initial shipment sells out. Yeah, I heard about that with Mars. Oh, shoot. No, no Marth, Mario's popular characters that are, that are still selling are going to get reshipments. But non-popular characters like, say, Peach and Donkey Kong, which we've seen tons of, are not going to be remade after the initial release. Good thing you got your Peach when I did. Yes, it is. Oh, man. So, it's, it's going to become a, a little market in and of itself, these Amiibos. It is going to sell incredibly well. Oh, God, I'm having Yu-Gi-Oh card flashbacks. You know what? You're not entirely wrong. Do you want to know what the exact numbers on the ami on the amiibo are? How one to one for every Super Smash Brothers th uh, Wii U sale. Wait, for every Wii U sale, on they an sell average, one amiibo. On an average, yes. That's pretty stunning. Yeah. Wow. Yes, that that is exactly why Nintendo went for this idea because freaking Skylanders has been doing it. For years. I thought that this was just going to be, I don't know, like a little cheap off the side thing. I thought that it would be buried and dead a long time ago. But you're telling me that it's flourishing? Yes. Flourishing and going crazy. Oh, I love... Oh, Disney man. Disney Infinity is also another one that did, that did this, and it's going to go nuts as well. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. There are box sets for, uh, for Disney Infinity, for... Uh, for Skylanders, and I'm pretty sure for uh, Smash with Amiibos. I'm going to have to get a shelf. I'm going to have to get a shelf for these things. Uh, <laughs> the last thing is that um, it isn't just Nintendo games that are getting the Amiibo uh, 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 usage. Oh yeah, I heard... One Piece! The One Piece video game for the Wii U is going to have Nintendo-exclusive costumes! Depending on the amiibos that you have, imagine Luffy Dressing. wearing as the wearing the Mario Brothers trousers. I've seen fan art of that. Yeah. Now it will be. Now it will, now it will be canon. No, it, it will be exist though. It will it exist. exist. Mario, Luigi. I believe maybe Sun, uh, like a Nico uh, or a Pete, Nami. Pete, 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 probably uh, a Nico as, as a Peach. Maybe Robin as a Samus. Actually, I imagine Robin, uh, Robin Nico as uh, Rosalina. Really perfectly honest with you. Either way, the costumes are going to be there. Get as many amiibos and see how many you can go through. I no, saw Zoro as Link. No, I'm freaking. Oh God. What's the reindeer guy? Uh, Tony, 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 Tony Chopper? Pikachu. Oh, freak. <laughs> Rumble let, Ball Pikachu let, version. Let, let the fangirl squee. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. And now onto something completely different. Oh, what do you mean? Ladies and gentlemen, live before you tonight, we are going to do the Legend Hunters Hoenn Gym Leader Roast. It's something that we've been trying to do for years. Ever since we started the Legend Hunters, we've always wanted to do comedy roasts of the gym leaders. You know, like they do on uh, Comedy Central with like Pamela Anderson. Uh, Larry William, the Cable Guy. William Shatner. Although this time... We're roasting the entire Hoenn Gym Leaders at once. All right. And just the Gym Leaders, we're not going to go into the Elite Four. Aw. Aw. Oh, you want to go and do the they Elite will be, Four well? They will be featured in a, sep in a separate review if you guys like this. Yeah, so uh, let us know if you like these whole roast ideas, because if 
we do get some good feedback on it. We'll actually produce the videos. Yeah, we'll this actually... This is a promise. Show us if you want it, we'll give it. All right, then. So, starting off with Roxanne. Oh, she's a brick. Fit it out now, house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's mate mate. No, she's, no, she's perpetually trapped in high school. She's wearing a Catholic schoolgirl outfit. Please notice me, senpai. <laughs> Have you talked to that Cap trainer Cap right Cap before you Cap met her? Catholic schoolgirl? The amount of, of room underneath that skirt would allow the headspace of three men. <laughs> oh god you don't even have to look that far to see up it exactly yeah I mean yeah. and again it might be Catholic she just might be asking for it also mm, how old is she again we don't she's, know she's a, all we do know is that she's a school teacher in the original version in this version I don't know she actually looks more like a prefect of her school prefect or ba but at the same time she's running that museum well, that is also a... her gym. So she's a fossil maniac, and I'm wondering what she's actually doing with her. She's also a slut. According to what fanon? Actually, according to the actual canon. Because in when you go see when you go see the Ruin Maniac post uh, post uh, Hall of Fame, she's actually bartering with the freaking Ruin Maniac to give her a fossil. Even going as far as offer going as far as offering him a gym badge or downright crying in order to get, in order to gain sympathy. Well, I wouldn't say that's slutty. I'd say that she's, she's very one, desperate. She's one step away from pretty much bending over and letting her explore her catacombs. Oh, God, we're going to... I hear that... He's about to rock smash you in the head, and I'm about to let him. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing that I'm solid rock. I'm sorry, but your defenses are not going to be intact after this. <laughs> You're about as solid as a jigglypuff. <laughs> Out, let go of my arm, let go of my arm, both of you. <laughs> That's what happens when you punch across me. So, Speaking of punching, let's talk about the next guy on our list. This moron! Bra Brawly, the fighting tag gym leader. Who apparently has gotten a tan since the original game. And has decided to take up boxing. And he's decided to ignore all safety protocol for any reasonable gym that has a sane person running it. Yeah, as you heard in our Christmas carol in the more earlier today. Yeah, I don't know what gym allows you to walk through it in the dark while there's giant weightlifting equipment ro just rolling around. Rolling around there! What's there that? are treadmills running hmm. in the dark! I smell a lawsuit coming. It is one dumbbell away. Yeah. From someone condemning the gym and converting it into a parking lot. Well, a parking like... lot on an <laughs> island where no one has a car, and basically everyone's and too I doubt late. They, and I doubt they know what cars are, given how easily influenced they are about what's popular. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Captivating great balls. <laughs> that is what they are fascinated with in my doofer. Firestone Masters. <laughs> Legend? Oh, man. I did not talk to those people. They disturb me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wait, no, wait. I am no. going to leave their high no, mind society Captain and Ray, move on. Cap, 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 no, Great Balls is the default. Is, uh, zero. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it is. Ah, uh, so you gotta run with something else. Yeah, well, I, I, I just couldn't uh, let that one go. It was just captivating Great Balls. They were just looking at Great Balls. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. No, not those kinds of balls. <laughs> no, he's talking about my kind of balls. Camerupt. Great balls. Yeah. All, All right. right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on from Brawly, we have the infamous Wahaha <laughs> Watson. Wahaha <laughs> Watson? Oh, God. Oh, no. That ace trainer. In ace. case you don't know what Legend's referring to, he's referring to the ace trainer who is actually Watson's wife. Yes. Yes. Now I ain't saying she's a, she. Uh, now I ain't saying she's a gold digger. Go. Okay. Nuggets are serious business, dude. But I. But she, but. <laughs> I, I, will, I am digger. stopping you from finishing that sentence. That is. That I am going to believe you if you say that. Don't shoot. No shoot. Um. <coughs> hey. 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 Okay. What did I say about reaching across <laughs> me? Don't worry. There's a wall here for a reason. Oh, you cast light screen? 
Uh, reflect. Ouch! Ouch! And oh. counter. <laughs> All right. So, what else about Watson? Um, he's pretty much the same old jolly, old, jolly old giant we knew from the first games. And I wouldn't say he's a giant. I'd say he's a, a shorter than me. Well, I'd say that he's got a lot of dirt in his background. I think. Yeah, actually, uh, he was in charge of New Marvel and C Marvel, both of which I've now gone so under. So he's not only got a gold digger, but he's also involved in some shady business. So he puts on a smile. They see me rolling, they hating, but Joel's gonna try and catch me riding dirty. <laughs> oh dear God damn it. I just imagine Watson wearing sunglasses and in a lowrider. No, he's on a, a purple lowrider. No, he's probably on like a low bike. <laughs> low like, bike. like imagine, imagine a lowrider, but instead of it being a motorcycle, it's an actual bike that you have to pedal like the big wheelies. And he's giving the freaking <laughs> big wheelie. That's what it is. <laughs> and, and he's giving the freaking Luigi death stare. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Holding a Pokeball instead of a shell. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, I would pay money for that. <laughs> someone make a gif of that. I I want someone to make a freaking gif of that. All right. Okay. Now, next, Flannery. Oh, your girlfriend. No, no. Well, she. Well, one not, of them. She she can make up her mind. So we kind of just broke apart mutually. <laughs> Though I will give you this: she is among the hotter of the gym leaders. She's a fire type trainer. You, you need your you need your eyes checked, man. You need your eyes checked. She is very awkward. Well, going through the teenage phase is part of the reason why it would be awkward. Yeah, they surprisingly they got that aspect of her personality right in the anime. <laughs> well, they still got it right here. She doesn't know how to introduce herself when 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 first talking to you, so she just says "fuck it, let's fight." Yeah. Yeah. And she's also apparently a really hot head because she keeps using overheat on me. Well, <laughs> maybe she should cool off in the hot springs. You do not cool off in hot springs. Although technically, her not, if, not not unless you're not unless you're in an anime. By the way, fun fact: her belt is actually a bath towel. Huh. huh. So then, does she actually go into the hot spring behind the focus center? Probably. 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 I am okay. going to keep an eye on you. You are not peeking back there. I need to go find my Kecleon now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's move away from the red, Leo fiery red. Leo, dig. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, you <used> fly. Doing <laughs> an air view and then plummeting right into you in her Leo, back. Leo, Leo, Leo you lock on. <laughs> That's what I was just saying. <laughs> God damn it. One, there you go. <laughs> oh, God damn it. All right. All right, let's see. Let's move along, Move away from the fiery redhead to the, oh, dear God damn it. Dad, please stop the oh, pain. Hang on, hang on. Oh, we forgot the little uh, renovation to the gym that she made. I don't know what safety protocols they follow in Hoenn, but seriously, they are no better than Nunova. <laughs> <laughs> oh, riding uh, riding on a on a uh, geyser on a geyser that scorches people hot that scalds people. Yeah. Riding it up and down the gym. Yeah. Yes, but going down is the fun part. Cause you do a wily e. coyote. What the hell am I doing? Defying gravity moment, and then fall in fall right on top of that platform. I don't know who sanctions these protocols, <laughs> but they don't, they're not doing their job. <laughs> and again, you're more resilient than the, the kids in Hoenn are more resilient than Innova. I mean, they... He's 10 years old. And, and he's, he's from ten, Jodo. And he's 10 years old. And he's from Jodo. He took the fall like it was nothing. There's no stagger or slowdown like there was in the Unova moment. Well, yeah, do, you remember when you, do you remember when you were 10 years old? Nothing had stopped yet. No, although, techni you until you although technically, I'm pretty sure they changed the ages, so they're all 16 now. No, no. they're 10 in this game. They, yep. they don't look it. Oh, they don't look they're they're 10. They're they 10. do. They're 10. When and you talk to anyone, you're basically looking up at them. Unless, unless, they're, they're, unless they're the little kids, in which right. those are probably like, what, 5, 6? Yeah, 5 or 6, yeah. yeah there you go. Which you're looking down upon them. You yeah. actually squat down. That's yeah. the funny part. All right, moving away from gym leader number 4 to number 5. Finally. Uh, Norman. Come here, son. Her daughter. Do you play as a girl? No, I play as Brendan. There you go. Come here, son. I'm about to teach you a lesson you'll never forget. Uh... Uh, the only reason they renovated his gym was so that way it would look badass when he uses retaliate. Good God, yes! 
It was, that's a br- beautiful move to use in that gym. Oh, no, it's beautiful to use anywhere. It's yeah. evil, though. It is evil. And base 140 damage. Which off of a slacking? Off of a slacking. Which he has two of! He has Why a... does he have two he of He had them? two of in, in Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah. Yes, he did, and it was retarded to fight him then! <laughs> by the way, you... by the way, Retaliate doubles in attack power if you if the Pokemon using it has just come off of a Pokemon on your team that just fainted. As a revenge kill, yes. Yes. Yes, off of 150 base power. Off of a uh, attack stat, I think. And then you add SDAB on top of that. Right. This guy! It's an insta-kill unless you resist, or you have a ghost-type Pokemon on your team. And even then, he's got knockoff now. Yeah. So, you're... Boned. You're worse than that, I yeah. think. So, apparently, Norman... Child uh, abuse! <laughs> No, he, he goes to the school of tough parenting. Oh, Come here, yeah. son, and let me put you over my knee. Oh. And so... now I just have flashbacks to my own childhood. Oh, don't. No, 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 no. Let's not make this dark. Let's <laughs> move on! Back to the air! Oh, yes, another airhead. Winona. I don't know what uh, she's doing uh, up there, but... Uh, 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 uh. What the hell are you humming? Uh... I think it's the... I'm trying to remember what the name of the song is, but basically involves Winona and it's from Fall Out Boy. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, anyway, Winona. Uh, her not, as big an, not as big as an airhead as Skyla, but still an airhead. I would it's say like, she's it's the, more like, it's she's more the like, definitive airhead. It's more like she has her head in the clouds. Literally, yeah. at one point. I mean, if you go to Monville, you can see her just standing up. You know that little tail out that you saw up there? Yeah. Well, that tail out's kind of bummed out because his spot just got taken. <laughs> yeah, she's up there doing God knows what with the old lady in the tail out looking up at her going, Duh. They're doing 420. Actually, she's they're just doing 420. That's what they're doing. Now, what she's doing is she's feeling the wind through her hair like it's a freaking L'Oreal commercial. That was my terrible impression of doing pots. <laughs> no, like I said, she's just standing up there with the window. No, that, that, that's that's why she's fucking airhead. No, it's, it's, can it's, I say my joke? God damn it! <laughs> I think I already said it. But I'll say it again. She looks like she's trying to pose for a L'Oreal commercial. <laughs> she is so. No, that's well. freaking Lysandre. Lysandre poses for a freaking L'Oreal commercial. Uh, or Sycamore, Sycamore probably. No, Sycamore is the L'Oreal commercial. <laughs> oh, no, Sycamore is that guy from freaking Kill a Kill. Oh god, not him. <laughs> no! <laughs> Imagine Sycamore's nipples. No! <laughs> Moving on to the twins. Tate and Liza. I thought I got away from the hive mind in Duford. What is you it with these? Said? Ha! Yeah, they're actually really well choreographed. Chore- yeah, choreographed in sync, and they are to date the only double battle in gym leader history. Yeah. I Shit, even- my finger was bent. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna look like some fat fuck. <laughs> or a really old man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, uh, in case you didn't see that, they were doing the fusion dance from DBZ. Only we're sitting on our asses and her fingers were bent, so. Thank God we can't sink energy. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tate and Liza do not have their, uh, they don't have their Emerald team. Thank God. So you still have to, it's only a, it's only one, one and one. One and one. Yeah. Which is pretty Lutus easy. Lutus and Soul Rock both went down with a surf with me. I had only one Pokemon left on my team and that was Swampert. Who killed every, and everyone else was dead. <laughs> Just every, I... I still have a little bit of trouble with Tate and Lysa, because they hit you at level 40. If yeah. you have not been grinding, like I'm usually trying to avoid, this, they're a big pain in the butt. Well, yeah, I had that same problem when I they, first played the game. They double team your ass so hard! Yeah. Uh, you right. know, I don't think twins normally go ahead and take a person to one one like that normally. Uh, in this case, they do! Uh, one from the front, one from the back. Once a guy, once a girl, remember? That doesn't exempt the rule. I mean, you could go face first into the girl and then the guy... Shit! Okay, so moving on from sex to... What sex? 
<laughs> Wallace is back and boy does he look my boy. He's not even wearing anything down there. It feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. He nothing isn't. at all. He nothing is. at all. He's not even wearing a thong. <laughs> Just the way Stephen likes it. Oh, that little diamond on his pants is a clip for his overalls. Oh, God. Just one click and his, his pants go down. And the thing is, when you fight him... <laughs> and when you fight him, he poses like, he, like he's in a freaking photo shoot. And the, one of the first things you see is his ass. That's the, the last thing you see. From the paparazzi see. shot. From the paparazzi shot, yes. Yes. You see his ass in glorious <laughs> framing. In glorious Pokemon 3D engine. I know there's a gif of that out there somewhere. There I is. know. It's just going to be him just the constant photo shoots. <laughs> oh my. Yes. Needless to say, if you don't have a grass type or electric type on your team, this battle is going to be a pain in the rear. Which I had both. Uh, if you have both, then it's fine. Yeah, although that Milotic is still a pain in the ass. Yep, without the lube. <laughs> yeah! Well, hmm. It's are, weird. Are, are you taking it a bit too hard, Zero? Maybe you should go ahead and space yourself. No, it's just weird. Just deep we, breaths and just in and out. No, <laughs> let me finish. I never get to finish, for Christ's sake. Neither does Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> That's it! Get, get over here! Don't! Get over here! I will murder you and leave your body in the ditch! <laughs> My pirate's got enough ghosts in it, thank you very much. Oh god. That's the same sound Steven makes after he has an as a No ghost. no 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 no. Well, you know what We're not going to go into the neat trio again. Actually, yeah, technically Wallace is Steven's knight. They're bromancing it at the very least. Yeah. Except with Wallace, it always has those other connotations. <laughs> yeah. He's got an entire troop of Fat. groupies. Yeah. They are his army. <laughs> and he his forces you to fight through them the further you fail. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He, is, he has weaponized the most powerful weapon in the known internet universe. Yaoi fangirls. Yes! <laughs> yes! We could go for hours on Wallace. Oh, well, oh God! Oh, God. <laughs> I think we know what Zero's favorite character from the gym leaders are. Uh, I, th I think we've, we've summed up the gym leaders well enough. If you guys want to hear more of these shenanigans, please let us know in the comments. Because we've got a lot more to say about everyone. It's just Wallace. Just, just, he what? writes himself. <laughs> he writes himself? <laughs> I didn't know he was big enough to do that. Oh, God. Or possible in that. Oh, God. Although technically, yeah. Oh, God. Dang okay, it. I think we're going to have to call this the Triple X Miscast because of the next segment we're doing. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, no. It's time for Ravenloft. Sorry, if you're calling it the Triple X, uh, Triple X Miscast, no, no, I am not hiring a stripper. I am not hiring a stripper for you. Look, all I'm saying is we talked about sex before. We're going to be talking about more sex now. It's inevitable. And yet you've never gotten any. Ooh. <laughs> I will murder you where you stand. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, not... What? What's going on this Christmas? <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, Leo's uh, stare is just... <laughs> that death glare is a one-of-a-kind thing. You gotta say. <laughs> well, why don't we get back to the maid... Okay, so now we're talking about Ravenloft. Yes, Good we are. old Ravenloft. How I it misseth thee. Alright, starting off with updates. Orion, how have you been? <laughs> You're sounding like my dog. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yay, yay. Well, Orion is still trying to manage his way, but I'm trying to round up my old allies, which include a certain samurai who I'm still looking for, and the... 
The fat priest. The fat priest. Death who... row. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. So you're still doing that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the samurai. Yeah, that didn't go so well. So uh, last time we got the, with the samurai, he was being tortured by the Falcovians. Uh, his fiance finds him, lets him out, and starts to pass away from the plague. Which, right in front of his eyes. Which reminds me, didn't you have to re-roll for her to stay alive? No, that was for Alistair. Ah. No, that that one was that one was pretty much a done for given the torture. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, he goes ahead, confronts the Lord of the Manor, kills him like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Albeit he dodged one of my sword swings because Zero decided to roll lucky for him. Well, he didn't decide to. You roll lucky hits when you don't expect them. You roll them without even thinking. What is with your damn dice? You want to use my dice in the next match? No! No! I want to keep this at least as fair as possible. My dice know me, I know my dice. I don't know what it is about your dice and those crits, but God! They are meant to be fair. How so, many times do I have to say it? He, he manages to go ahead and find some supplies, and he's making his way to the west to hmm. get help. Meanwhile, I'm dealing with a bunch of hippies. Kettle? Okay. Yes. Then oh, yes, the, the, the hippie orgy that you attempted to murder someone from. I did not attempt to murder someone. I have plans for some of those bastards. Unfortunately, Daryl is not very good at this small box. Mm. I have funny accent, and I am kind of big and look like a... Uh, bear? Like a bear. Like Russian bear. I look like Russian bear. I'm like Zangief. I could crush your head between thighs. You can crush like, walnuts between thighs. That's not what I said. <laughs> but you can do that. But you can do that. I could do that by flexing a bicep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure probably I'm, good. You can do that by blinking your eye. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of women who get turned on by that just for some reason. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but well, yeah. anyway, back to the maid. Well, after dealing with the stoners and getting kicked out of their little uh, pot frenzy. Yeah, yeah I we, have, we go we back to to the manner in which uh Well, hang on, hang on. We didn't mention that one thing for uh, the Sashi. Yeah, we did. Did we? That yeah. was a lot Unfortunately, we did that out of order. Because Nisashi was the last one that had stuff. Yes, yeah. and right at the end of Nisashi's cutscene, where, of course, you realize that She's your dead. fiancé is dead, we all had this big old moan of silence. It was completely unintentional. We just couldn't figure out anything to say. Yeah. It was just pure silence for a little while. And then this guy says... Can we get back to the main, please? And we just lost it. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and so, that's when I started pounding the booze. So <laughs> we're back with Zochil the... You are pounding the booze, uh, he was pounding the maid. Uh, we get back to Zochil the, Azt- <laughs> the Aztec stripper with her man-boy man casino. Yes. And uh, Miko, the, 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 the... Gluttonous priest. Gluttonous and... Oblivious priest, which will come into play later. Oh, George! Yeah. Alba, the genuine gender ambiguous elf, half elf, half elf, and Lou, the the crazed warrior who always has to go ahead and pound the ladies. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So, so after where we left off, we were in the middle of a bog, in the middle of a I mansion. Was, I was in the middle of pounding the maid, <laughs> and I had just had my character basically kick the door that you were in. And continue walking on down the no, hall. No, you didn't. Yes, yeah. I did. You know, you, you you kicked the room that I was supposed to be in only to find I'm not there. No, I opened the door and found that you were not there. I heard the thumping sounds <laughs> that the downstairs. GM described. From downstairs. Found the door that was happening and realized you were in there and kicked the door and then I walked on. Oh, you know what? Now I realize what the hell happened. What? Okay, so I'm going to continue from Lou's perspective before Alba continues. Fair enough. So, Lou goes ahead and finishes with the maid. Uh, we're getting dressed, and I fi- and the GM tells me, you can't find your pants. And I'm like, seriously? You can't find your pants. What about the spare in my pack? You can't find your pants. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> Both <laughs> pairs of his pants were missing. So, I have to go around with a toga until the until Ticino, the, the, the man boy, goes ahead and offers me a loner in the meantime. Yeah. Oh, man. In the meantime, I'm spending... Uh, I, I'm trying to find out who stole my pants. Back to legend. Okay, so Alba, the half-elf, is going ahead and... Uh, well, I'm curious. This is a manor. This apparently seems to be the center of where everything's happening. Might as well do some investigation Scooby-Doo style, only I don't have the dog. So I go ahead and go down to the basement, realize, well, there's something down here. 
And uh, a little thing that I've been doing uh, before we went into the session, I've been doing some research into the Hound of the Baskervilles, the Sherlock Holmes story. Reason? The reason being, I had a sneaking suspicion that what was going to happen in this session would be linked to the Hound of the Baskervilles. Due to A, the dogs, B, the dogs, and C, the fact that we're dealing with this kind of territory, which is basically along the lines of Sherlock Holmes' time. The world also happens to be very much, um, very much 18th century Britain. Yes, yeah. very, very much so. With some conservative elements of New England. Yes. yes. So, so thanks. that means magic users like myself are not looked upon fondly. And if yeah. they and if they are magic users, they are most likely dealing with, dealing with tentacle monsters. Yeah, because keep in mind we're still called Cthulhu crossover drinking here, and I still kind of want to do a normal session where we just fight against the demon. Which How normal, is that normal? normal session with the demon? I was about to say. Yes. So we do that. So basically Saturday night on my uh, art site. Oh, okay. All right. So. I've been doing all this research, so I know a lot of the tropes are going to play. And when uh, the GM mentions there is a covered painting somewhere, of course, me being the curious fellow and knowing all this stuff, I need to get into this. So I go ahead and uncover a painting, which is dated to 100 years ago. Hmm, curious. Curious. What's it doing down here? We go ahead and uh, rendezvous back for dinner. For dinner. And but here... before then, um, something else is going on. Uh, Lou is searching for his pants. We mentioned that. We're already up to that. Yes, and then you confront me. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't confront you. No. I go through your shit. No, you I go through You walked up to my face first and accused me. Have you seen my pants? To which I replied, well, if you kept your thing in them, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't lose them so often. <laughs> yeah. And then he proceeded to go ahead and look through... Uh, all the stuff, and find a spiked cod piece. <laughs> it doesn't confirm anything about the gender. It just happens to be. It happens to confirm that Alba's a bit more colorful than she, than he she is willing to let on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am still awaiting word from the GM as to whether or not this is a secret disadvantage. Yeah. Why am I suddenly picturing sadomasochism? <laughs> Actually, I was. I'm thinking. Okay, can I go ahead and? Give my own little character theory. What's up? Okay, Albus trans is a transgendered, as a transgendered person who fluidly switches between genders. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because you have we have you have these mood swings where you where you accuse me as a woman and then you're buddies with me like a guy. There is no making up that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, great. Well, if you want to think that, I won't stop you. It's your own opinion. All right. I won't say whether or not it's right or wrong. So, but... meanwhile, back to dinner. <laughs> back in, to dinner. And in which... In which we're actually all fine. Miko fails his gluttony roll for once. <laughs> and hilarity ensues. I overeat. I end up getting sick, going to the bathroom, and while I have my pants down... I'm busy looking at the paintings. No. To yes, which we, yes to, it was. to which we hear, the dogs are attacking! Yeah. Well, hang on, there's also an important detail. Uh, I actually noticed, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I know yeah, you're I'm, killing it! I am killing it. Yes. Well, not yet, I'm not. Well, you were mis you were not allowing me to do the freaking punchline, but whatever. Well, there was stuff that happened before then. Fine, say your stuff and I'll say my stuff again so people don't forget. They're not goldfish, dude. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Okay, so... You're beginning to make me feel like a goldfish. Let's carry on. Okay, so uh, we go ahead and we're having dinner, and I go ahead and start looking at all the paintings, and of course, one of them is missing. do do do, And we start making our lie checks uh, against the Lord of the Manor, and for some reason, we he's not telling the truth. He's getting the dates all wrong, and all sorts of weird things are going on. To which we cut back to Miko in the bathroom with his pants down, and cue the dogs. The wolves howl, and quite literally, Miko shits himself. He fails the HT roll and shits himself. 
To which we all laugh and cheer. <laughs> on, the, on the toilet, so there's no negative repercussions. Yeah. So. But, but the problem now remains that Miko is in a trapped room with the dogs about to hound him, so we have to rush up and save his ass. Yeah, so thankfully the there's a stall door preventing them from knocking me down, so I have a quick chance to get my pants up and ready my staff. Unfortunately, it doesn't do so much as three dogs still await you when the door comes down. Yes. Well, only three dogs as opposed to four. Yeah. No, no. We bought we down. There were four dogs. There were three of them by the time the door broke down. There were three of them by the time the door broke down. And we were not alone in this fight. Right. Actually. The, the Lord of the Manor and his butler were attempting to fight, although they weren't of much use. Actually, the butler was not of much use. The guy with the claymore, on the other hand. Oh, yeah. He did take care of one of them. Actually, I think he took care of two of them. And let's see. If I, reco- and if I recall right, uh, Zochul ended up uh, blinding one of them. With yes, sunlight. Actually, no, that was you, dude. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, wait, that was, that was me with light jet. I'm sorry, I got things mixed up. I was thinking of something else. Either way, the wolves were banished, although one of them was allowed to go free, which, for whatever reason, still kept an eye on the matter as we were, as we were trying to, as we were trying to go ahead and get ourselves back together. Uh-huh. Uh, the Lord of the Manor tells us of a mysterious figure who appears on the bug near the early hours of the morning, to which we most of us agree to go ahead and wait to watch for. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we, we proceed to do so and watch a woman being chased by, uh, a ghostly woman being chased by the hounds to her death. Yeah. With someone else in tow. To which Tails, of course, seeing things go running off into the middle of the night, proceeds to follow. On for all four feet. Yeah, because she can transform into a panther in case you forgot. Jaguar. She transforms into a jaguar and tracks down the mysterious apparition into the middle of the bog. She, re- she records the entire event and goes ahead and returns back to us post-haste. Mm-hmm. To which we learn that uh, the person who was chasing after, her, after the lady was, in fact, the lord of the manor. A memory of him, not just to be clear. It, it, it's the memory of him when the event occurred, not him in the present. Right. It was a time loop thing going on. Yeah. And uh, the lady's last words were something along the lines of a curse upon your... Curse upon the hounds. Curse upon you. A curse upon you. I own your hounds and I will destroy you. Yeah, something along those lines. And then she fades into the bog. Right. She sinks into the bog and we can't hear the last few words. Right. Um, I'm trying to remember the events in specific order because this is where it gets foggy. Lou goes ahead and shags the maid again for the night because she allows him corner in her room. He continues to search for the pants to no avail until the GM magically says they reappear. We did find out about this later, but but that's but po- that's po- that's, that's post session. Sidebar: post-session. Why am I ho- why am I expecting that there's like a curse rune on your pants now? Be- oh. Because because we think terribly of tails. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for spoiling. <laughs> but anyway, well, no, that doesn't say who took the ta- the pants. No, for all we for all we know, a demon took them and cursed them. No, for all we know, Alba still took them. Yeah, you still thought that I was the one responsible for your missing pants. Well, considering the other shenanigans, I'm not surprised. And yet we fight quite well together. I know, that's what I'm saying, love-hate relationship. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, um, Jeez. that happens. Miko's situation, however, is more dire. Yeah, yeah, let's see. I fail another gluttony roll. Not that's not the worst of your situation. It seems that the cook, who uh, we thought would hate your guts for eating all the food, seems to be aroused by your massive appetite. Yeah, which was really throwing me off. Personally, Miko, on the other hand, did not notice a thing. <laughs> well, he did notice. Well, because, he did notice. He just chose not to. Yeah, he resisted. Uh, clue. Because uh, Miko's oblivious, he gets to resist oblivious... Uh, Clueless, sex- oblivious. He gets to resist sex appeal rules. The problem becomes that this is a very this is a very pent-up cook, and she was not going to back Who down. Who was very homely-looking. Oh, God. Yes. And that's being kind, by the way. And he, all the while, the GM starts to have fun with this. Ooh, honey, you say. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she, she begins to offer him cream puffs of milk and honey. To which you have to start rolling against gluttony checks. Which I... 
Which, which, I, which you had to fail and spend plot points to re-roll to break it. I failed every single time. I had to use both of my plot points, which I was saving for dire situations. Fuck this, this was dire. <laughs> Rerolling, fuck. Use a point, re-roll, fuck, re-roll. Oh god, thank god. Because <laughs> I did not want to end up having to spend a night with her. Yeah. I'd rather not have to, sl- with a sl- with sl- with sl- to sleep with something that... You would rather sit on your own staff, is what you're saying. <laughs> I'd rather make out with a thing that should not be. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, Ash speaks of that and it's not as fun as it sounds. <laughs> uh, no. Neither, either way, Miko makes it out alive. Uh, <laughs> with his with his virginity <laughs> attack, uh, Ash decides to go ahead and try communicating with with the oh, yeah, with all the, the with the wolf that happens to still be around. Yes, uh, we see the giant. I see the giant hound make the fright check, pass it, and I decide to get creative with my fire spells. I create some fire and I start to shape it into some fire writing, which uh, after discussing with uh, the other party outside of character outside of character. Uh, I decide to send the message friend into the swamp. Which actually confuses the hound, makes him go, Ooh, and then he runs off into the swamp. So that was pointless. It was pointless. Not entirely. Not entirely. Not entirely. Not entirely. Not entirely. Because it goes in and sets up for the next uh, section of our chapter. We... I think around this time I was smashed drunk, so I barely remember anything. So <laughs> the next thing that happened is that we eventually, uh, Tails goes ahead and picks the lock to the lock study of the Lord's of the Lord's house, and decides to go see what secrets he's hiding. Yeah. And somehow met and tries to get and uh, uses me to distract me to make sure she doesn't watch her do this. She goes ahead, and manages to get into the locked room, and uh, and finds a finds finds a, a safe behind a picture of the Lord with uh, torn up writing. Which we could not open. Specifically, it's the words that the lady said to the Lord. Which were the exact same words that uh, Zochel heard in the swamp. Right. right. So, Tails reports back this to us, and we get the feeling that there's some sort of miscommunication going on here. Enjoy. So we, yeah. so we unanimously agree to go into the swamp to go look and investigate. To which we find... Snakes! Snakes! With two poisonous snakes... Which bite? One bites. Uh, one bites Zochil in jaguar form. The other one gets speared by yours truly. Yeah, yeah. set on fire by yours truly. Well, no, it actually misses the fire. No, the fire did it. No, no, it missed the fire. No, it didn't. Whatever. I set it on fire and then you stabbed it. Either way, they both died. Eventually, Zochil, uh, Zochil healed herself, and we continued onward until we found the female ghost. Which was surprisingly more pleasant than we expected. Yeah. Well, more pleasant than what we've seen before. I mean, at least we weren't aged 40 years. <laughs> oh. It was actually 60. For no, it, it, it was it was no, it was like 80 for you. It was 40 for me. Yeah, yeah. I turned 80. I was aged 60 years. Yeah. You were aged to 40. You were aged to 40. I was aged to 80. Either way, uh, we negoti- we talked with the ghost lady and she's pretty bitter about the, the about getting chased down by the dogs. In part because the Lord's brother was attempting to go ahead and force himself upon her, it seemed. It seems so. And, and in she defense killed him, and of she herself. Ki- and she killed him in self-defense. And here you can see the Hound of the Baskervilles reference if you've ever read the book. Well, it's or not seen quite, the movie. It's not quite like that. It is a reference. spin on the story, but many of the details do remain the same. Ex- with regard to the fact that there's a Hound, there's a mansion, and there's some people there. Yes. I, either way, we the, we decide to go ahead and, and do a diplomatic, go the diplomatic route and try to reconcile the two parties. Mm-hmm. The we ghost, offered to bring the Lord of the Mansion here to the place where she died so that she may do with him what she will. Mm-hmm. But, but, but we ask that we go ahead and go the diplomatic route first. Yes, we ask her to hear his words before she acts upon him. And we do the same thing to the Lord when we report back to him. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We which, actually got bonuses on this because of the way we said it. Yeah, which pr- pretty much threw the GM off. No, no, not not entirely, but again, we tend to surprise the GM. Yeah. We bring the two parties together in the swap to go ahead and negotiate. And then the ultimate happened. Well, not quite. They actually, it actually was doing well. Yeah. It was going well. Until the hell hound showed up. Yes. Yeah, a giant hound, ghost hound. The the hound. It, it, the um, literal hound the, of Baskerville. The GM made a distinction that we that in earlier in the campaign we were fighting 
smaller hounds that were being controlled by the ghost. This hound is the physical manifestation of the curse. Yes. In which you could not land a hit on it. Yes, none of us could actually land a hit on it with any physical attacks. Not until both Meikle and Zochil cast Moonbeam and Sunbeam respectively and made him take a corporeal form. Yes, yes. but not just that. I mean, did, remember the amount of damage that happened from Zochil's first attack? Yeah, it was about... She rolled five freaking dice on that thing. Keep in mind, it's about the equivalent of a, Zer of a Zeran uh, Belaynus fire. Zeran Belaynus fire or... In magical terms, it was basically a magical uh, tarot sword, or a mat, or a tarot, or a tarot sword swipe. Uh, Either way, it did enough damage to corporealize it. Um, Alba, myself, and Tosino all attempted whacking at it, but we failed until Miko threw out his. You did. You had been avoiding using the spell for a while, hadn't you? Uh, let's see. What was? What did I use? I forgot. You it was just uh, Moonbolt, wasn't it? Yeah, Moonbolt. Yeah, I keep, I keep neglecting... You, you, cast, you casted it in his eyes, and that's kind of what helped us. No, Light Jet. Light Jet. I, light, yeah. light Jet in his eyes. I used Light Jet once again, and it worked. Huh? Blinding him. Along, along the side of the fact that uh, Tosino also stabbed him in the eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, but we did not get away without casualties. No. No, everyone lived. It was just we took heavy injuries. Yes, yeah. we took heavy Jojo, injuries. Jojo took uh, ten, hit, 10 hit points of damage, which caused her to... Make a consciousness roll. The but Lord also to stay alive. The Lord also took heavy damage and managed to take a con and manages to remain conscious. Yeah, he had his throat practically ripped out. Uh, thankfully, uh, Miko and Zochil uh, stopped, him and stopped the blood, stopped the bleeding, and healed him up. So a you were actually, okay. I failed my healing. Zochil managed to do the stop. Yeah, but you healed stuff. her. Yes. Yeah, but you healed. So everyone was more or less okay. And there was even a close call to where. The wolf attacked me. All but decided to do an uh, acrobatic dodge. Meanwhile, you, with outside of your character, are going no, no, no. Uh, to put this in context, my character was uh, dr three plate mail, which, which is actually pretty decent at stopping weapons. The problem and is this ghost can actually phase through your shield and actually phase through your parry. Yeah, it phased through the shield, not through the parry. Yeah, it did phase through the parry. It did phase through the parry. I, I didn't parry. It was a block, and we just said it phased through the block. Yeah. Okay, so okay. phase through your attempt to defend yourself. And you got decided to go ahead and do an acrobatic dodge to try and save me. Well, a sacrificial dodge. And the you were going, no, 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 because you knew that we were both going to end up, both of us, on the ground. Yes, which would leave us both unable to attack properly. However, this dog had just ripped 10 HP off, off of, of someone who doesn't wear armor. Yes. So it does, again... That that's kind of the point because it doesn't apply to someone who actually wears armor. The but damage this, the damage potential becomes less. But unfortunately, the, the either way, either way, you insisted on doing the acrobatic dodge, in which, which both of you ended up me, on your ass. But you ended up on crying. top of me in a compromising situation. And yeah, if right. I were not focused on the fight, I probably would have made a comment, <laughs> and then you would have had to roll. Uh, what is it? Uh, impulsiveness to not slap me. <laughs> No. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. Especially for the codpiece comments. <laughs> oh man. There you go. However, well, our asses were saved by the most unlikeliest of heroes. Tosino Who got what? the kill on yeah. the dog. The ally NPC Wimp. who the, who we've called the win from the very beginning of the campaign is the one who stabbed it in the eye once more after going berserk. And killed it. And, and destroyed then, it. And then actually managed to get out of his berserker rage. Much to our joy and delight. Yeah, because I was... Although technically I was kind of looking forward to whacking him over the head and knock him out. Oh, that would have gotten a lot of bad... That would have gotten a very... You would, you would very have to range. You would have to do two rolls. One for bad character playing, and another for dark powers. Really? Yes. Well, I'm pretty sure if, if you well, actually... you guys could have knocked him out. I would have probably just tried to heal you guys. Well, I, either way, we managed to go ahead and come more or less unscathed, and we are rewarded handsomely by the Lord. Well, we didn't just go through unscathed. <laughs> well, there was one more detail, super, and that was... Superficially. I mean, there's superficial wounds. Yeah. Well, not just superficial. No, just the fact that we were able to resolve it peacefully. The, man, the ghost did say her final farewells... And we were treated to a rather touching cutscene, which we just had to say it was the best ending possible. Yeah. 
To and which we got to the rewards. Rewards. Which was a lot of money. Yeah, we got how much was it? And oh, a lot. A I, lot. Got, I I took uh, the the maid decided to go ahead and uh, reward me with a with a um, with an accompanied bubble bath. So I was out of the picture while you guys got the first spoils of war. Yep. To which, uh, Miko, what did you get? I got a marble bust statue. A marble bust, which which Alba dutifully recognized. Yeah. Yes. And appraised at like twenty thousand. Two thousand, about. Yeah, I didn't even. My character doesn't even know anything about art, and, and I apparently and, heard about and it. And by a random IQ roll, you managed to go ahead and deduct the item. Even in Sithicus, this person, this person is famous. Yeah. In a place hated, uh, in a place where humans are hated. Yeah. yeah. Even elves love the art. Yeah. Which is uh, shocking. What did you get, Alba? Uh, Alba. Alba got a sword, a special sword, which we did determine to have an enchantment on it. Which caused extra bleed damage. Mm-hmm. It would basically draw more blood from wounds and cause, an, and cause a victim to bleed out faster. Which sounds great on paper, but I eventually decided to sell it. Because it didn't work as well as your magic sword, which we hold. No, he, he just wanted the magic sword so he could still use it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then you got a suit of, like, silver got, mail. No, I got uh, heavy, I got medium plate mail, which is very nice, but it's a lot heavier. Yeah. So I sold that off because it was also ornamental, which means it wouldn't be as... As sturdy as as a uh, combat arm. And then Tosino and Zochel got some nice stuff. I forget what it they was. They got two, twenty thousand. They got like ten thousand dollars worth of cutlery. Well, they got the cutlery and sold it for ten thousand. Which I rolled the dice and it critted for how much money they got off it. Which means that you got Tosino to freaking crit. Yes. <laughs> and got him the best money possible, like 33% profit, more than what it's actually worth. And the and merchant... The merchant thinks he got, a, he got a good bargain for it still. <laughs> yes. Um, the, we did some minor character management. We, we did uh, some shopping for some of the characters. But the last major important thing came from my other character, Alistair, who came back to go ahead and greet the characters. And who started to have an argument with Zocho. So an argument would be an understatement. Oh boy, that was a well, a full on row. Roll for initiative. No, it wasn't a roll for initiative, but it was a full on, it was a full on fight. So, um, the last cutscene from last time was that Alistair's family is being threatened unless he coughs up the, the, this necklace of acid, which he gave to Zocho for safekeeping. Yeah. Now that she's back, undoubtedly the Falcovians will also come back. So he needs to get the object or otherwise persuade them into not killing him. Mm-hmm. So he goes ahead and tries it nicely. She refuses. He attempts to pawn it off her. She refuses. He goes ahead and threatens her uh, her honor to induct a battle with Tosino. And she still managed to finagle her way out of it. Yeah. He hires a pickpocket to go after her. And she absconds it by transforming into the jaguar. Because by transforming into a jaguar, anything she has on her person is also transformed. Which means that many, many, many times over, Alistair's plans were foiled. And it ultimately came down to a duel to the death. No, it didn't. Tails made sure we didn't fight, and she, as soon as she got the chance, she immediately skipped town. Well... It, according to Alba and to Lou, we were predicting it was going to end in blood. I was going ahead and betting on Tosino, and your character was betting on himself. And then my character said, you two made a bet to say who would win, and then I said, said a bet that it would end in a draw. Which it did. Which it did, and which to which I cried out in consternation, for it, I had realized... That we now own the lucky damn moon, the damn lucky moon rabbit priest. Money. Money. <laughs> you almost cost me out of new armor, dude. <laughs> it was only f- uh, five silvers. Five silvers you paid. I had to pay ten, and he paid twenty. You're lucky I didn't ask for a gold piece. Yes, we are. Otherwise, I would have been bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, being of status zero, Alba cannot make much money. Yeah. Being a half elf has its drawbacks. Yeah. Nevertheless, um, that was the end of the campaign, but we did get one cutscene with Tails. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, Tails and Tosino did eventually uh, run off and abscond with the jewelry. However, However, another character is coming on along the way. Yes, and this one looks to be amazing. She is uh, Tails' new character who is, mm, how should we put it, psychotic CIA? Psychotic CIA, she's hardly... Har she's like a perky goth leader of the CIA. Yes. We're yeah. Working for Barovia, which is the land of Strahd. Strahd. Uh, he's a vampire dude, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, the, <laughs> oh, and, the, and the titular lord of... And the lord of the titular castle Ravenloft. Yeah. Which is the original place that uh, Ravenloft sort of spawned from. Uh, Ravenloft was initially a D&D campaign... And Castle Ravenloft was one of was one of the many campaigns that this eventually spread into its own thing. Yes. Yeah. Strahd was apparently such a uh, charismatic uh, creature that he needed his own campaign. In a sense. And now that we finally meet him, what do we see him doing? Rubbing his forehead in consternation. Yep. Fr from his chief, I would say chief spy. Yeah. Sabotaging a warrior general by putting poison ivy. In his pantaloons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, just glorious. It was brilliant. Because we've been dealing with Dark Lord since day one, basically. Yeah. And just to see one. Just to see the one. Pout. Pout. And groan in anger and frustration. I would get rid of you in a heartbeat, but unfortunately you are useful to me. <laughs> <laughs> She's basically Harley Quinn. Yeah. Only she trolls the Joker repeatedly. If, yep. if that's it's glorious. Yes. Yep. Anything new on the channel? Anything we can expect on the channel, Zero? Well, for starters, this is going to be the last podcast of the year, probably the last video of the year until next year. But who stole the pants? We oh, know. yeah, we forgot. Oh, yeah, we asked the GM afterwards. It was Ochil. Yeah. yeah, Zochel somehow broke into the room while you were still doing. No, it. no. Remember when you broke when you busted in the door? When I busted in the door, I didn't bust in the door though. That's what I was asking because that's why I was asking for clarity. You busted in the door that I was supposed to be in. You didn't actually bust in the one that I was in with the mate. No, that's why I was asking for clarification. I know. I just kicked the door and then walked off. Yeah, but you didn't. You didn't kick it open, did you? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm clarifying that because that would be the way she got in. Yeah, so we don't know how she got in. I'm assuming that that is how she got in. Yeah. There was a little creak enough for a jaguar to crawl in, and that's how the pants coat wears on. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming that's what happened. Yeah. No, I don't think that is it, because I didn't actually throw any strength into it. I didn't have to roll you, ST or anything. You don't have to. I mean, if the door is not closed properly, it'll just kick open. And even then, it could be just enough to let a cat in. You never know. But anyway. But anyway, uh, that's uh, we, nothing more on the channel, at least until the new year. Yeah, so uh, by, we, the, by then we should have more podcasts by at least the first or second week of the new year. We've got uh, more type reviews coming up. And we've got some more hidden projects on, coming on our way. And depending on what I get for Christmas, we might be doing something more with the channel. Hopefully, hopefully Let's Plays? Hopefully Let's Plays. All right, then. All right, I'm then. looking forward to, to the full Let's Play of Hotsable Boyfriend, then. No. 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 If anything, the first thing we're going to play is fucking Katamari Damashi. I still say, I still say Hotsable Boyfriend. And I will get you high for Katamari. <laughs> high for Katamari? <laughs> no, I will, I will literally drug you. And no. make you play it. No! I cannot be... Remember. I cannot keep my job if I go... If they find out that you drugged him, do you realize this? Fine, I'll drug you. Even worse! This is Leo Force. This is Leo Force. This is Dead Zero. And this is. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, everyone. This is Legend Hunter. And. Merry Christmas. Later. Ciao! On the first day of Christmas, members gave to me a pillion in a long tree. On the second day of Christmas, members gave to me two lotty twins and a pillion in a long tree. On the third day of Christmas, members gave to me 
Three hidden Reggies. Two lucky twins. And, and a Pidgeot in a lump tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, Maybridge gave to me four Chatelaine. Three hidden Reggies. Two lucky twins. And, and a Pidgeot in a lump tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, Maybridge gave to me five survivors. Four Chatelaines, three hidden Reggies, two Lottie twins, and a Pidgeot in a lump tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, Mabush gave to me six Jedi playing, five survivors a ring. Four Chatelaines, three hidden Reggies, two Lottie twins, and a Pidgeot in a lump tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, Maybush gave to me seven swan a swimming, six Jen I'm playing, five a ring, four Chatelaines, three hidden Reggies, two Lottie twins, and a Pidgeot in a lum tree. On the eighth day of Christmas, Maybush gave to me eight mill tanks rolling, seven swan a swimming, six Jen I'm playing, five a five a ring. Four Chatelaines, three hidden Reggies, two Lottie twins, and a Pidgeot in a lump tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, Mavish gave to me nine spin the stancing, eight mill tanks rolling, seven swan a swimming, six Jen I'm playing, five a surviving. Four Chatelaines, three hidden Reggies, two Lottie twins, and a Pidgeot in a lump tree. On the tenth day of Christmas, Maybridge gave to me ten waylords leaping, nine spindas dancing, eight mill tanks rolling, seven swan a swimming, sixth gen I'm playing, five us a five us a ring, four chatelaine, three hidden wretches, two lottie twins, and a pigeon in a long tree. On the eleventh day of Christmas, Maybush gave to me eleven grunts I'm punting, ten waylords leaping, nine spindles dancing, eight mill tanks rolling, seven swan a swimming, six gen I'm playing, five a five a ring, four chatelaines, three in Reggie, two Lottie twins, and a Pidgeot in a long tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, Maybush gave to me. Twelve bellies drumming, eleven grunts like punting, ten whalers leaping, nine spindles dancing, eight mid takes rolling, seven swan a swimming, six and I'm playing, five a ring, four chatelaines, three in and Reggie's two lotty twins, and a pigeon in a long tree. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. God damn it.